GCR Genesis Christian Radio GCR Genesis Christian Radio Well, right. Well, welcome again to Genesis Christian TV. It's a great honour as it always is to uh, be in the presence of David Nathan and, of course, John Hayward from Court Farm Church. Where we are today, David's visiting the UK again with his lovely wife, Jackie. And we've had a chance to spend some time with them today. And it is a busy day. You spoke this morning, David. You're speaking again this evening. There's yeah. a prayer meeting coming up very, very shortly. And in between tea and some cakes somewhere. So we're going to make this quick because we need some refreshments because you need to get <laughs> nourishment back into your bones again, I think, David. <laughs> well, if I skipped a meal, I could do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, you wouldn't. <laughs> People say to me all the time. Yeah. Thank you. Well, bless you all, and thank you very much for taking the time out to speak. Because what I want to speak today about, gentlemen, is prayer. And it's something which came out very strongly in mm. your message this morning, and you made reference to it as well, Joel. And it's something mm. which we as Christians, we talk about quite a lot. But really, the question is, are we actually required to pray? Is there a demand from the Lord that we actually pray to him? We can look at other religions, Eastern or otherwise, and it's quite a religious thing, five times a day, etc., facing this direction. But mm. are we required mm. to pray? What does the Lord say about that, David? Well, very much, both in the Old and New Testament, there is the command and instruction to pray. The Apostle Paul uh, instructs that, that prayer be made for, for kings and yes. those in authority. He says that we need to pray always, to be in prayer continuously. Mm. Uh, the Lord Jesus... Uh, when his disciples were questioned about, about fasting and prayer, he said that when the bridegroom is taken away, then his disciples will pray and fast. So, so prayer is, is an instruction and commandment, yeah. from God, both in the Old and New Testaments. Well, what about position in regards to prayer then? Mm. When I was a young lad, I was always brought up, this by my bedside, heads bowed in church, quite often knees. Is that again a thing that's adopted, or is there a homage? Is there a worship element to that, do you think, John? Um, well, really, prayer ultimately, the important thing is the position of the heart. Yes. And yes. really, what we need to do is make sure it's our, our hearts are toward God, that we're seeking the Lord when we're praying. We're not trying to pray, for example, in a church situation to. Um, preach to people we're making sure we're praying to God the attitude of the heart is the most important thing now there are times when one does kneel you know before the mm. Lord there are times when you feel led to really right. kneel before God and bow before the Lord it is an attitude of worship so in a sense prayer affects the body to an extent but ultimately if the heart isn't effective it can just be a kind of uh, just show show Absolutely. something and that really so, was so. back to what you were saying today jacob or, or sorry david that we can go through the motions mm. and to all right. intents and purposes from the outside we can actually put on this persona that we're pious we're religious we're holy right. mm. but actually if we haven't got that faith we haven't got that want that need to connect with god that actually it's all for show isn't it that's right and that's what jesus you know, spoke about when he, when he uh rebuked the pharisees who made mm. an outward show yeah. of prayer and re really, he was, he was drawing from you know, the rebuke that God gave Israel, where he says, and these people draw near me, near to me with their mm. lips, mm. with yes. their heart. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, 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 it's far from me. Yeah. And as, as John was correctly saying, it's prayer is about our heart relationship with the Father. Mm. Mm. And when we approach prayer you know, with, with that attitude, with that mindset, it's something we do privately. So, so we don't assume a position to be seen as, as being pious by others no. because true prayer, our, our intimate time with the Lord, needs to be done in quiet, in our closet. Yes. And then <laughs> so if there's not a position where we pray, is there a place that the Lord prefers or is it anywhere, anytime, anywhere? I mean, I often pray in the car, for example, and other people do as well, or even in the loo, is it sometimes you can't get quietness in a house, you've got a large family. Is there a particular place that has preference to the Lord or is it irrelevant? Okay, well, I think really the most important thing is realizing that prayer is the outworking of relationship. Mm. So actually, if you're in relationship with the Lord, if you're somebody who's close to the Lord, 
you're going to be praying to him regularly. You're not going to be thinking, now I need to be in a certain place to begin to pray to the Lord. There are times when we do need to shut ourselves away. The busyness of yeah. life comes in. We have to be away from certain things. There was a time when the Lord said to Moses, in a sense, come out of the busyness of, of leading the children of Israel. He had to come up the mountain and be there and be with God. And there are times when we need to separate from the busyness of life. We need to find a quiet place. We need to be there. But there needs to be something of a just a regularity in our in our walk with the lord where we're constantly okay. communion with him and praying and being in fellowship with him so just, just on that if i, if I yeah. just uh, add something yeah. mm. the apostle paul in ephesians what I'm just quoted he, he mm. talks about praying with all yeah all prayer all, all prayer. kinds of yeah. prayer and yes. I it's so important to understand that Prayer mm. is a generic term we use for communication with God. Yeah. Mm. And this is so important. So there's not a kind of prayer. No. So, so have, there's worship, there's supplication, mm. there's intercession, yes. there's thanksgiving. So in your car, you can mm. pray, worship, speak mm. to the Lord. Amen. But there's a time for, when you're going to intercession, when, when yeah, you're now yes. going to deep things of the Lord, where you begin to really... Uh, stew and churn mm. yeah. over mm. things you're not going to do that driving your car no, no. um i just just what one uh, incident uh, a year or two ago jackie and i were off to go see somebody and i had an intense burden to pray and I, we got in the car and we're driving down the road and i'm praying and I, my eyes are closed and i'm really <laughs> praying and jackie just nudges me she says david open your eyes <laughs> you know so clearly you can't distract yourself. Yes, yeah, certain yeah, places yeah. Yeah, require some wisdom in our prayer. Yes. But does it matter then, gentlemen? I know when we look at the Lord's Prayer, the opening line is, Our Father who art in heaven. Is that then the basis for all prayer? Is it to the Father in heaven? Or can we pray to the Holy Spirit? Can we pray to Jesus himself? Or is there really only one person who actually listens to the prayer? The Lord Jesus will intercede for us, but is the prayer always to God the Father? Oh, well, on, yeah, yeah okay. On. Well, essentially, if we take the Lord's Prayer, you remember the disciples came to the Lord Jesus. They obviously noticed something different in Jesus' prayer than to others that they heard praying yeah. about. And they would have heard much prayer. The Lord teaches to pray. What is it that Jesus had? And he, and, he, and he goes on to tell them, and he says, When you pray, pray, Our Father, who art in heaven. Prayer essentially is directed to the Father yeah. through the Son, but we're also commanded to pray in the Spirit. Mm. Yeah, On all occasions, we need to be praying in the Spirit. So actually, our prayer is to the Father through the Son by the Holy Spirit. And essentially, you have the Trinity in work um, in, in our intercessions, in our prayers. So yes, we do need to pray to the Father, essentially, um, through the Son. It's only, we can't come to the Father through any other means. We can only come to the Father through the Lord Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah. And the Spirit helps us in our weakness, shows us how to pray. So we rely on the Spirit. We come to the Father, but through the Son. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because I think we've all had times in our lives where words fail us. Because of circumstances, mm. because of ill health, that we just want to reach out to God. We want to connect, as you said, David. Even mm. sometimes... If we haven't got the ability to form words, mm. the Holy mm. Spirit connects with our yes, spirit and right. connects with the Lord. And that's such a benevolent thing, really, isn't it? It's, it's just an awesome thing. Mm. Well, it says, yeah, it's, it's Paul writes about in Romans 8.26, mm. which some people believe Paul's talking about speaking in tongues. Mm. But he's, he's saying, you know, when we do not know how to pray as we ought, the Spirit himself yes. makes intercession yeah. for us yes. with yes. groanings which cannot can be, be uttered. uttered. So it's not mm. speaking about the heavenly language, it's, mm. it's just that churning of the Spirit. But coming to that word, John said, you know, do we pray to the Holy Spirit? Well, clearly we don't. Mm. There, there, there is no, no example, example nor mm. instruction on that. Do we pray to Jesus? Well, he told us not to. Mm. He told his disciples, you know, shortly before his crucifixion, he says, in that day, in speaking about his resurrection, he says, mm. you will ask me nothing, but if mm. you ask the Father in my name, they will give you. And it's really mm. important for us to understand our relationship with Jesus and Jesus' relationship with us. Because he is perfect man and perfect God mm. when it comes to intercession his his uh, position is the mediator between man and God yes. so we're not praying to him in his deity mm. but we're praying to the father through his humanity mm. 
because he's made the way yeah. for us to come into the presence yes, of the Father. Indeed. So we address all our requests to the Father yeah. through the mediator yes. who's made the way that we may come into his presence. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we cannot worship Jesus. Yeah. In fact, there's this clear example that we in, should in scripture. Not, yeah. Yeah. So we should worship Jesus. Yeah. We should worship the Father. But there is no... That's mm. no example of worship in the Holy Spirit. Mm. Now, unfortunately, in the modern church, there's this trend now where we speak to the Holy Spirit. And that yes. came, th yes. I would say, uh, strongly through um, the ministry of Catherine Coleman. Mm. But it then really got uh, a, a mm. foothold through Benny Hinn's book, Good Morning Holy Spirit, mm. where he encouraged the, the, uh, Christians to come into communication with the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that one cannot... Yeah, that one one cannot um, yeah, in a situation say Holy Spirit give me grace mm. or help me, but one should not develop the habit of praying to the Holy Spirit yeah. mm, mm, mm. and certainly not worship. In many ways, though, this phrasing of the Lord's Prayer also clarifies the role within the Trinity. You've got the Father, mm. the Father. So you've got the Lord in heaven, who's the Father the Son, and throughout Him, you cannot actually get to the Father. So the Holy Spirit calls you to Jesus, who then intercedes on behalf. And each one of them has got a role and a function, not one more important or less than the other, but really clarifies that really it is the hev Heavenly Father who is the person who actually makes things do. Right. They're, they're done in Jesus' name, because the Lord loves His Son. Mm -hmm. But it's the Lord who actually, if you want, presses the buttons to make things happen. And it's the Holy Spirit then calls you to the Lord Jesus Himself, to actually then progress up further to the, to the Father in mm. Heaven. And I think sometimes when we sit down and we look at scriptures, you mentioned this morning, David, to make notes, to actually let it meditate within our hearts and our mind, and then apply that in our lives. Scripture opens up into an avenue that suddenly, wow, I never really thought about this before because we don't actually think, we just read. Yeah. And that sometimes we need to clarify. Even with the best preachers in the world, we still need to work it out ourselves, don't we? Very much mm, so. Yeah. Mm. One thing again, which causes confusion, it's on this subject, is that the Lord says, lead us not into temptation. Mm. And many people take that off at a tangent and they think, oh, the Lord can lead us into temptation. So why are we saying don't, Lord? Because you're meant to be good, but you can lead us into danger. Can you clarify that for us, gentlemen? Well, James writes and says, uh, let no man say when he's tempted, mm. I'm tempted by when God. God yeah. Because God, God cannot be... God doesn't tempt anyone, we're mm. tempted by evil. So James clarifies it very clearly, is that God won't tempt us. That's right. However, we have an enemy mm. whom the Lord does allow to mm. tempt us. So Jesus' prayer, you know, lead us not into temptation. It shouldn't, we don't take it literally as in God, please don't you make me go into <laughs> yeah, temptation. Mm, mm. But it's, 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 it's a prayer of the Lord, protect me. Yes. Make me aware of temptation, sustain me and keep yes. me faithful to you in temptation and this it also really speaks about humility yes. you know it's like lord i cannot face temptation i can't that's right i can't live for you in my own strength so father in temptation mm. or should temptation occur mm. please keep me yes, yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely and i think that's an important thing as well that it's that reliance on god because we know we mm. ourselves are totally mm. unable mm. to achieve yeah. anything yeah. yeah apart from just dig a bigger hole for ourselves yes. every, every mm. occasion mm. john when we, when we look then at I'll say daily prayer in relation to a functional Christian family. One of the things that we do is we pray to the Lord before a meal. And it's that sometimes it's called, say, the grace. And I know you've spoken about this yourself, David, in the past, but I'll just ask you a whole check in this one second. We're going to be having a meal soon, and mm. somebody within the church will bless the food. And this is the issue I'm getting at. What are we actually praying for? If the Lord has already blessed all things that are edible for us, mm. Are we asking for his further blessing on the food, or are we just simply thanking him for it? Well, it depends who's saying it. Oh, but, okay. I mean, um, <laughs> but, I mean, usually, I mean, I, uh, we can make a big thing of these things, can't we? I think, essentially, uh, when you've got food set before you, and, it's, uh, you know, you, you, you're going you're gonna to eat of it, I think, primarily, you're acknowledging before God that he's the one who's been, he's your provider. Mm. That he's the one who actually has given you this, that without his provision, we wouldn't be able to receive what we're going to mm. have. So in thanking the Lord for the food, we're acknowledging he's the one who's provided it for yeah. us. And that's basically what I do, yeah. thanking God for what he's given to us. And even just to ask the Lord that the food would be used to sustain our bodies in his mm. service. That's essentially 
what it's unto. But the Lord has given us all things richly to enjoy, hasn't he? Amen. And so, praise God, we can thank him. We don't want it to be a formula. Mm. You know, when, when people start getting formula, you know, this is the problem with uh, repetitive prayers. Yes. But if we come to the Lord, we, we're truly grateful for every good thing that he's given to us. Let's give thanks yes, and praise God for it. That's that, what I feel, that. really. You have anything to add to that, David? Or was that more or less what you would say on the subject? I, 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 I sort of come at it from the left field. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a history in, in, in the Judeo-Christian tradition of prayer. We know that Jesus uh, broke bread and he blessed us. Mm. Uh, and, and, and that really stems back from the, the prayer that the Jews had been praying for at least 500 years up mm. to that point, the blessing of the bread and the wine. That was yeah. just mm. uh, part of their, of, of their um, just thanksgiving to the Lord. So what mm. John is saying is, we should be grateful. You know, mm. the subject of praying for food is actually it actually comes from Paul's uh, teaching on both clean and unclean food, mm, right, and he okay. says whatever is received with thanksgiving becomes clean. Yeah. You know, so as long as you're thankful for what you're mm. eating, that your thankfulness to God as the provider of all things good mm. is then makes the food acceptable. Mm. Now, if you're continually thankful for food. Then um, you're living in a state of prayer, aren't you? Yeah, you're thankfulness. <laughs> but Amen. I just I, I, there's humor in there, but there's truth. Yeah, there's, absolutely. God, is, it's, it's it's about our heart attitude. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And as, that's what John was saying. Yeah. It's, it's, ritual tradition mm. makes the word of God of no effect. That's so, right. We're just going to pray over you know your mm. your, your sandwich mm. at work, or you mm. you, know, you have a buy a chocolate at the shop, and you're going to pray over that and. It then becomes almost ritualistic. Yes, yeah. yes. But yes. I think at family time, especially you know the, the evening meal, mm. uh, yeah, we 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 sit down mm. as a family and reflect on the day, reflect on mm. God's goodness. Mm. To you're not just blessing the food, but it, it's, it's you're really thanking God for yes. His goodness over the entire family of the. And that's an yes. important thing, isn't it? Because sometimes mm. we tend to thank the Lord and praise Him when we think he's really done something special for us, we've been ill, he's made us recover, mm. we've lost a job, he's provided new employment, or whatever, that the big things, the big things we can tell our friends about. But mm. actually, it's in the small, humble, Amen. routine things Absolutely. as well, those daily provisions that we can yeah. take for granted. Well, easily. that's the thing. I mean, when you think about how often prayer is mentioned in the Word of God in relation to Thanksgiving, mm. yeah. it's often linked yeah. together, and actually, um, we often take things for granted. You know, so food, provision, a roof over it. These aren't our due. These are mercies from the Lord. Amen. So when we wake up in the morning, we should be thanking the Lord we woke up in the yeah, morning, yeah. you know. It's yeah. a mercy from the Lord. Yeah. And when you're in that state of constant thankfulness in prayer, it prevents the heart becoming covetous for things. For yes. one, you mm. learn contentment. And it's a, it's a right attitude toward God who's, who's given us all these things. Absolutely. Mm. I want to have a quick look at... The whole idea of prayer in relation to unbelievers. And if we look at James 1, for example, where it's the prayer of faith. So if we haven't got faith, is the Lord listening to that prayer? Apart from the, the cry out, Lord, save me, I want to repent, the ultimate prayer. But anything else which an unbeliever will present to the Lord, is he listening? Is he hearing that prayer? Well, I think one has to approach this um <laughs> Not theologically, but just mm. through the scripture. Okay. You know, one can say, yes, the unbeliever has no relationship with the Lord, therefore he has no access to God. Mm. But that then would be denying the very nature and character of God. Yeah. See, yeah. God is good, mm. and he desires all to come to repentance. So mm. for him to withhold his goodness mm. when an unbeliever in sincerity calls out to him mm. would be counterproductive to God's purpose of saving. So you, very often, if, 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 you, if you speak to, to believers and you ask them about the test me, you'll hear that at a point in their lives as an unsafe person, they cried out to God yes. and he responded. It wasn't yes. necessarily, it wasn't uh, regarding salvation, but mm. it was a prayer. Mm. And God proved that he is. Yes, exactly. Through yes. answered prayer. Mm. And that's what really what God is wanting mm. to do. He wants to prove to man. In fact, what is what is Paul right? Uh, he says to the to the um, Athenians. He says that you know the Lord has has, has placed men in, in certain habitations yeah. that in groping for Him mm. they might find Him. Yes. And so so yes, yes. when a, when anybody mm. calls upon the name of the Lord in sincerity, God will respond yes. with the with the uh, idea of them coming to salvation. Yes. 
I think that's the thing, like what David was saying, is is the prayer sincere? I yeah. think if the prayer is sincere and they're calling on the Lord, they're literally crying out to God, mm. then the Lord hears. You know, on the on the flip side, the scriptures say if we regard iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear. You know, there's qualifications, aren't they? But if somebody, even in their, their sinful state, they know they're in a desperate state, they begin to cry out to the Lord. Well, that's what the Lord wants to hear, isn't it? The Lord wants to hear the prayer of the desperate. That's right. The, the, the cry and that may ready. well be the actual trigger for that individual and to start that journey, that walk, that actual Absolutely. recognition of Jesus Christ as their saviour. Mm, mm. And in many ways, it contradicts the old saying that the world is full of atheists, but still, whenever it comes to the crunch when the lion's facing the goal, God help me. Mm, yes. And there's truth in that in mm, many ways, so, isn't mm. that Put your back against the wall, who are you going to cry out for? Mm. Even if you don't necessarily believe, but there's a mustard seed in there somewhere mm. that really, <laughs> what, what have I got to lose? And then the Lord speaks to you. Yeah. And that again, yes, it yeah. just, it says grace, isn't it? Mm. It's just his everlasting bounty that never runs dry. Mm. Can I chat a little bit then about other types of prayer? You mentioned mm. this morning corporate yes. prayer, but there's a few modern things that come in. You touched on this a little bit this morning, David, on modern types of prayer, which we'll just give a little overview on. But what is congregational and corporate prayer as opposed to personal prayer? What's the difference? Or is there a difference? Well, yes. Mm. We see this early in the book of Acts, uh, mm. In Acts chapter 1, how the, yes. the disciples of Jesus came together to pray corporately mm. uh, for whatever the Lord had purposed, uh, which, which we now know as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And when Peter was imprisoned, again, the church mm. came together to pray. To pray. And so uh, the early church met yes. to pray, to break bread. So corporate prayer is when the body of believers mm. come together to pray into specific things, mm. things that they have agreed upon with your personal prayer it's 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 issues between you and the lord yeah mm. that, that don't revolve around you know, the congregation mm. yes yes it's a, i mean i think the the corporate prayer life of the church is vital to the church mm. i mean the lord himself said didn't he my house shall be called a house of prayer yeah, absolutely. and often it's the prayer meeting that's the least attended and the least you know mm. focused on Said enough, yeah. and I mean, it's that old saying, isn't it? You know, the church that prays together stays together, and there is a foundation there. I mean, you're having yes. a prayer meeting this afternoon, yes. and yes. you said it. It's from three o'clock to about half past four. Mm. Without being unkind to lots of churches, they go an hour and a half prayer mm. on a Sunday. Mm. Wow! And I know other brothers who would think nothing of that. They would think two, three, four hours. The church mm. coming together. Yes, yeah. Because it's such a special thing to have that time in a busy week. Oh. To be totally in the presence of the Lord Absolutely. and Him sitting down with two or three together, listening to what you're saying. That's so precious, isn't it? Well, that's it. And corporate prayer means the body functions together. Oh, right, yeah. And you're mm -hmm. actually learning, uh, you're seeking the Lord about a situation sometimes, and you don't know the way ahead. And one person prays, and because if we're all functioning, we're listening to that prayer, and we say, there's something in it, there's an amen in us mm -hmm. over that prayer, and we all take it up. I mean, we've made the prayer meeting so dull, haven't we, honestly? Yes, yeah. I mean, but the prayer meeting, when it's being led by the Spirit, is anything but dull. Mm -hmm. And an hour and a half really is a short time when you're in the praying in the oh, Spirit yes. and really seeking God. Yeah. I mean, when you look at what Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy 2, he says... Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, and this is the, uh, the verse that David mentioned earlier, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Yeah. So that is right up there on the priority list for the local assembly. Yeah. And actually you often find when revivals happened and the Lord's moved in a particular locality, you'll find it's because there's even just a small company of believers, believers gathered together to seek the face of God in agreement. Well, I, words, I think you know? quite often, John, and you, we've had this in the past, where mm. the church has been petitioning the Lord on a subject, on, on an issue, getting mm. clarification, direction on something, mm. and you've got 5, 10, 15, 20 people together, Mm. The Lord then doesn't just speak to one person. He will speak to half a dozen, if not all of you, Absolutely. and you'll all get the same message. But, and yes. that's the confirmation that it is of the Lord. Yeah. So, maybe an example, you're looking to, do we spend money building an extension on the church? Let's take this mm. to prayer. Mm. And the Lord will answer that. Mm. Mm. And that is such an amazing recognition that the Lord isn't just yes. listening, but he's listening to all of you because your hearts are in tune mm. with his. And it's 
if it be thy will. Mm. And if it's the Lord's will, then that's it. It's a done deal, mm. isn't it? Mm. But that's such a confirmation when you're all mm. together. Oh, you have to wonderful. witness that response from yeah. the Lord simultaneously mm. and you think, our Lord's a powerful God. Isn't that mm. just wonderful? Mm. You know, and it's a real gift, isn't it? Isn't oh, it? Yeah. Let's have a quick chat then about worshipful prayer and singing. Quite often people will offer a prayer as a song and sometimes people offer us a song as a prayer. Can we distinguish between both or, or does it matter? Well... Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> Good answer. Thank you, Pastor. I, mean, I, 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 that, I agree I with that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because there are so many diverse times, kinds of prayer, and, and in the original languages, you know, you have, you know, the different languages, you have, the, you have the, what is intercession. Mm. Intercession can be worship. Mm. Because intercession is a deep crying out yes, yes. to God on behalf of somebody else. Yes, amen. Yeah. Uh, but a supplication mm. to song. Mm. You know, Lord, make me an instrument. Mm. You know, an instrument, you know, you know for thy purposes or something yes, like that. There's a song, yes. something like you sing it. Worship that's or the one. Yes, yeah. So yes. there, you're taking a prayer, but to yeah. worship. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Uh, there are no hard and fast rules. I think what, what we need to understand about our Christian expression, uh, there's a liberty in Christ. Yeah. Yeah, there's no bondage. So we, we, we can't compartmentalize the Lord and say, right, yeah. that, you pray like that in this situation. And mm -hmm. There's a, a natural flowing. Amen. Uh, but things like intercession, if, if you've been in deep intercession, mm -hmm. I think so few Christians yeah. truly intercede. That's right. Yeah. That's where you have a burden. Um, yeah. You know, Epaphras having a burden mm. for, for Ephesus. Paul, you are birthing, as, as he yes. says, you know, the church of Galatia. Uh, it's, it's that deep um, crying out to God on behalf yeah. of others. Because the church hasn't experienced that, uh, many haven't experienced yeah. that, uh, they'll say, oh, worship, pray, the same thing, but it's mm. not. No. But supplications, thanksgiving to worship, yeah, not a problem. Mm. I, I was going to ask about intercessory prayer, but you've answered it anyway in, in, in that mm. statement, and that's really important because it's something that with many things in the Christian church today, we pick up buzzwords and phrases mm. and intercessory prayer, and they go, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm into that, but actually, what is it? You know, mm. so thank you, Francis, for that, yes, David. That's right. But we're also in a world today which every Christian bookshop up and down the country and across the globe sells books on all sorts of Christian experience and mm. ideas. And one of the things that I've started to look at, and I'm really bemused at it, is soaking prayer. Have you heard of soaking prayer? Soaking prayer. Yes, well, yes. it's actually been around since the, uh, I would say the late 90s. Right, okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's, I think it's just, it's got a new impetus uh, through the whole Bethel mm. reading type thing. Right, yeah. okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's just new age, mumbo jumbo. Okay, so we'll have the same centering prayer, same sort of idea, just a different slant, yeah. a different way of doing the same thing, but actually not doing the same thing, you're just inventing. It's the waiting religion. on the Lord for a feel good moment. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But this goes back to what David was saying earlier in the message. The enemy tries to counterfeit the genuine work of God. Mm. Now, he will try and counterfeit as a type of form of prayer because he knows that true prayer is very powerful with God when it's real when you get real intercession mm -hmm. but of course if you get the count of it coming in it turns people off from seeking the genuine doesn't yeah. it and really getting into prayer meetings and seeking of God so we we mustn't get put off by these things mm -hmm. but you know the exposing of falsehood isn't by abstaining from what's real Quite it's right. by coming into reality that yeah. exposes yeah. it's light that exposes what's real years ago I was in a fellowship and they were part of a group who were going to be doing a prayer walk. And I've never heard of this before. And I come from a reformed background, so I'm thinking, what is this? It's not in the prayer book. What's, what's going on here? And there was half a dozen churches coming together to claim a town, which they were already living in. They were part of that community, half a dozen churches, but they were going to walk around this pattern on this Saturday with a few banners, a few people strumming guitars and whatever. And I thought, I'm not going. Because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the need. I didn't understand the concept. Again, is this something which we need to get into, or is this a replay on the walls of Jericho? I, I don't know, I never really understood it. Well, to me, it's quite simple. Yeah. The Lord said to Joshua, He said, Go and possess the land, mm -hmm. the land that I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And every place where your foot shall tread, I've given mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. So, as long as you're a Jew <laughs> in relationship with the Lord, 
and you claim the land of Israel mm. as yours, you can have prayer walks all day long. Mm. But the church <laughs> has not been given mm. land. Mm. We are sojourners. Our inheritance is the kingdom of heaven. So yes. for us to claim the earth, mm. the, the Bible says that you know that that Satan is the god of this age. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We don't see that the apostles, you know, organizing a prayer march around Ephesus mm. or Thessalonica. It, it's just again, it's I think instead of people going back to the simplicity of the word mm. and as as john was alluding to earlier on your know, revival broke out mm. when groups and not large groups no, of no. very sincere very mm. hungry and desperate saints mm. Mm. fell on their faces yes, and cried out to god unceasingly mm. until he moved yes but we're looking for the hype and we're looking mm. what would paul say to timothy of, of these days that men will have a form of godliness, but deny his power. Yes, oh, yes. we look so Christian in all the yeah, things yeah. that we do, waving banners and marching mm. down the streets, mm. making proclamations. But after, what, 30 years of this or 20 years of this, declarations, yeah. and there was a video that came out, uh, Transformations, How to yes. Transform Your City, and it was only found mm. out to be, a, the whole thing was a hoax. Mm. Yeah. Surely, mm. if this stuff worked, we would have Christian yeah, countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If it did work, you wouldn't really need to have regular prayer meetings. That's a good point. Because you could just claim the land. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you just claim the land. But the Lord, I mean, it's like what we were speaking about today, wasn't it? The, the scriptures speak about persisting in prayer, continuing in prayer unto breakthrough, unto breakthrough. Keep on going, keep on going. But if you actually boil it down, if you can actually claim a city for the Lord, just by saying, I declare this city as the Lord, then that means intercession is not needed. Right. Which is a very dangerous yeah. thing because the Word of God clearly shows us the importance of intercession, mm. and that's and, and also in many ways when you get the name and claim it idea, mm. it almost comes across as quite trite. So, mm. Yeah, mm. Oh, it took thirty seconds, you know, yeah. and the whole idea of persistence and the keep on knocking and the mm. whole idea that we need to keep coming back to the Lord. Yeah. So many scriptures remind us of. Mm. You like well. There's no need for that scripture, it's irrelevant. Yeah. God didn't, we don't need that any longer. Mm -hmm. And then we can yeah. take this bit out as well, we don't need mm -hmm. that bit. Because we're relying on our own style, our own ideas, and our we own put terminology. faith in faith. Yeah. That's essentially yeah. what we do, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's yeah. certainly, the, the reality is, mm. is your doctrine mm. will determine your understanding of prayer. Mm. Mm. So if you're yes. a dominionist, then you will mm. just make declarations because yeah. you believe yeah. that you have the power of God. Mm. So that persistence then, is that the same as praying without ceasing? Is that the same thing? It's exactly the same. It's synonymous, yes. yeah? Mm. Okay, then what about a prayer warrior? This is a term which has started to be, again, quite quite common in evangelical, charismatic and Pentecostal churches. Oh, he's a prayer warrior. Or she's a real prayer warrior. Praying for Israel or praying for whatever. I get the idea of the concept, but I don't find it anywhere in the Bible. I'm not trying to dismiss it, but it's just a modern label on somebody who's fervent in the prayer, their ministries of prayer and ministry. Is that what it's saying, really? You know, when I first became a believer, uh, the church I attended, there was the prayer meeting for the congregation. That mm. only lasted an hour. It was an hour of mm. fervent prayer. Mm. And then, on a Friday, there were those who would come together, and they'd pray for two, three hours. And they just had the ability to pray for, for a long period of time, and we called them intercessors. Now, there are those in the body of Christ who God mm. has given the ministry of intercession. So mm. they're able to spend hours and hours mm -hmm. in prayer. Mm. And so there is that office. Mm. But you'll find that a person who's called to that office is somebody that's very humble, very yes. quiet, very much in the background. Mm. What we see in, in, in certain uh, of the modern churches is, yes, the prayer warriors. that They, they have a label and mm. uh, they're puffed up mm. and they're the go-to people if you need mm. prayer. Yeah. Yes. Mm. That's not a, an intercessor. No, no. We're all called to pray. Mm. It's like we're all called to preach the gospel, but we're not all evangelists. We're all called to look after each other, but we're not all, all pastors. Mm. So we, are, we all ought to pray. Mm. We all ought to intercede. Mm. But there are those to whom God has given a greater grace in, in intercession mm. than he has to others, because we have different giftings and different callings. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What mm. about John Candles and Incense? Are they Eastern mysticism, or are we looking at some maybe some Judaic principles that would have been done in, in, in that time and really they're quite innocent? Or should we actually steer clear of that type of idea of lighting a candle and a prayer? I think the problem is that a lot of these things become rituals mm. and a lot of them become icons. You're getting a lot of this back in the church again today. When yeah. you're getting certain people must have visualizers for prayer. So there will be, you know, a cross, you must have a cross or you must have 
um, some kind of lighting of a candle, a station, all candle, these yeah. kind of things. Essentially, um, sometimes these things come in to create atmosphere, but what do we need when we, we come to prayer? We need the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's who we need. And really, you don't need any of these things. You can be out, you can be in a busy place, but your spirit can be communing with God. You can be near the Lord in a busy place if you're exercised in your spirit toward God. In prayer, you can, you know, and I think we don't need ritualism and, and, and all these kind of things. Yes, I suppose people will say that, well, they this means this to me and that. But primarily who are we praying to we you know when you're in, when you're going through it you don't turn to a candle do you you turn to the yeah. living god and you pray yeah. there isn't there, there is no um basis for candles you know no we see in, in the tabernacle <coughs> later in the temple there's the menorah the mm. candelabra but that was only seen and maintained by the by the uh, direct descendants of aaron it was unseen by the, yes. by the right, populace okay. Absolutely. Uh, so mm. And that was a reflection of the Holy Spirit. Mm, yes. So that was a shadow of the real. Mm. So why would the, we then adopt the, the yes. shadow? When we have the real, we have the Holy exactly. Spirit yeah. who leads us in our intercessions. Absolutely. And uh, if we need props yes. to pray, then what we're doing is I'm focusing on a candle or, yeah. or a cross, but mm. I'm neglecting the Holy Spirit who's in me, yes. who's leading me into all truth. Yeah. And so these things mm. are not helpful. No. They're actually a... Distractions, really, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And destructive distractions at like that. And often, you know, we we get into visual things and we lose sight of the fact we walk by faith, not by, by sight. Christ. We mm -hmm. don't need these things. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us, as uh, David was saying, with the menorah. The oil speaks of the person of the Holy Spirit. Right. So much, through yeah. him, we can intercede. Vain yeah. repetitions and praying without ceasing. What's the difference? I always think when I speak about praying like ceasing and vain repetitions it always gives me the image of jerusalem and the wall and all these people coming putting the little notes on the wall and bowing their heads and saying the same words in routine that is not what the lord's calling us to do is he no no mm. there's a history a long history with, with israel with um vain repetition so mm. i quoted earlier this, this morning um i think it's Isaiah chapter 2 where the yes. lord s speaks to israel and says you're full of the eastern ways yes, yeah. Yeah. so the influence of the, the of the eastern mantras mm. had, had really before christ had, had, mm. had come into to the the middle east and it, within judaism uh, many of their prayers uh, coming coming out of orthodox judaism are almost like a mantra mm -hmm. it's the same prayer over and over again yeah. same words repeated so that's what the lord was addressing it's not a, yeah in, in light of what we spoke about earlier about praying without ceasing mm -hmm. so we're, we're asking the lord to yeah to really intervene in the life of a loved one mm -hmm. and we're bringing that for the mm -hmm. lord mm -hmm. daily and maybe two, two or three times a day that's not a vain repetition no. a vain repetition is a mantra yeah yeah, it's babbling, isn't it? Yeah, yes. quite right. Yeah, there's no engagement of the heart in it either. It's yes, that's very, what we're putting you know, it, 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 it's, it's almost lines. like I'm just going to keep doing this till yeah. eventually something will happen. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, you know. yeah. Three questions left. First one: We are encouraged and told to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, yet we know that fundamentally, as we move towards that end time, Jerusalem is going to be the centre of incredible carnage, violence, etc. Is there a contradiction there, or when we are asked to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, what are we actually asked to pray for? Because we're mm. not, mm. in any way, I would guess, going to change the Lord's mind as mm. to what's already been ordained in Scripture mm. in relation to the end of the world, yes. the Armageddon-type scenario, mm. the, the rapture, etc. Mm. 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 Do you want to start? <laughs> I'm just, I say something, it's probably highly controversial. Oh, right. Well, that's it's very... in Psalm... Just... Sorry, no, my brain went numb. The the peace of Jerusalem is found in Psalm... The 122, isn't it? Yes. Let, let, let is it? the portion of scripture. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, Psalm 122. Yes, verse 6. Right. Yeah, and, and the prayer is pray for the peace. Well, let's read the whole psalm. Mm. The song descent. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. 
Mm. Our feet have been standing within your gates of Jerusalem. So first thing, the house of the Lord is in standing. Yeah. It doesn't mm. stand anymore. Right. Mm. Jerusalem is built a city that is compact together, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the testing of Israel. Mm. Again, they're going up to the temple to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for thrones are set there for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Mm. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, Peace be within you, because of the house of the Lord our God. Right. I will see. So three times in the psalm, mm. prayer is petitioned in the course of Jerusalem because the house of the Lord is in mm. the city. Mm. It's not there anymore. It doesn't exist anymore. Mm. So now, I'm not praying for that. Well, I'm. This is my personal view, and I'm probably going to alienate myself from a lot of people. <laughs> but um, I'll be here for you, brother. That's all right. <laughs> I appreciate, you know, a, a, as 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 a as a ethnic Jew, I appreciate, especially in this country, the UK, where there is such a desire for uh, within the Christian community mm -hmm. for Israel. I would rather then pray for the salvation of the Jews yes. than for the peace of Jerusalem. Because in the context of the song that we just read, Don, prayer was petitioned because the house of the Lord was there. It has since been destroyed. And it will only be rebuilt in its total splendor during the millennium of Jesus mm. Christ. So Jerusalem, according to the New Testament, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, is called spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah. It's referred to as a place of wickedness, yeah. not a place of glory and beauty. It will become. Return to that. Mm. Oh, it will. Mm. It will return when the Lord comes back to Jerusalem. It yeah. will be the glorious city. Mm. But for now, it is not glorious. And no amount of prayer, mm. praying will make it glorious. Mm. Therefore, our prayers, especially for those who have a heart to see the, God's people come back to, them, mm. to Him, is let's focus not so much on the peace of Jerusalem, but that the Prince of Peace would be revealed mm. to his, the inhabitants mm. of Jerusalem and God's mm. people, the Jews. Mm. And as the Lord said, peace, peace, there will be no peace. Mm. Um, mm. Thank you for that, David. It's a really, really simple answer for what, in some terms, is quite a complicated understanding of that dichotomy between the types of the Scripture words. We're praying for something which the Lord's saying isn't going to happen. It's, it's yeah. that contradicts that quagmire, isn't it? John, mm. Revelation 5 8, praying for the saints. Mm. What are the prayers for the saints in Revelation 5 8? What are they let's, praying for? Let's turn to that. And this will be our concluding prayer, our penultimate question today. Three. Revelation 5 8, what are the prayers of the saints that we read about? Well, if we. Let's take it from verse 6. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. When you have this phrase, the incense, hmm. I mean, this is referring back to the Old Testament. I mean, when you look at the book of Revelation, actually, there's a lot of symbolism in it, which it brings you right back to the Old Testament. The, the book of Revelation isn't written as something different or separated from the scriptures is actually allegory, rooted yeah. in the old testament yeah. actually a lot of the old testament you find uh, answered for you when you look at it um, and relating to the book of revelation when you have this whole matter of the incense it speaks of the prayers of the saints incense going up in the in the house of god in the old testament um, you had it in the tabernacle in the temple the incense going up representing uh, the intercession of the saints. Well, think about the prayer of the saints. They are going to be going through difficulty, persecution, hardship. There's going to be the prayers of the saints. They cry out to God. You remember, there's the prayer that the saints are beneath the altar and they're crying out to God for um, justice, for vengeance over what has happened to them on the earth. So this is something of uh, relating to the intercession. And we're going to have to 
be crying out to God all the more as we see the days getting closer to the end. Yeah. And the Lord gathers it up. I think this is tremendous. And that's getting back to what you said this morning, John, isn't it? That basically it's that persistence in yes. the face of extreme persecution, danger, yes. that we don't lose our faith. Our focus is on the Lord. Come, yes. Lord Jesus, come. They know they're going to be beheaded. They are aware of what's going to happen, but their focus, their attention, and their trust and their confidence is mm. in the person who's always been confident, who's always been faithful. If you look at that, uh, it's, a actually, it's, a, it's a beautiful portion of scripture, mm. and it's repeated again yes. in Revelation about the prayers of the saints. Chapter 8, yeah. Well, look at the context and, and certainly the, 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 the chronology of it. Mm. It's before the seals are open, so it's mm. before Daniel's 70th week. Yeah. And the imagery is that there's this bowl that is full with the prayers of the saints. It almost speaks of as we crying out to God for his return, you know, mm. the, 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 the cry of the Lord's return should be on our hearts, come Lord mm. Jesus. And and we're so seeking his return. And, we, and as we're praying for this wicked age to come to an end, so our intercessions, our prayers that continue to go to, before the Lord, it's almost we have the sense that they've been stored. Mm. They've been yes. stored in this bowl until a time comes mm. where the Lord says, it is time. Mm. And so with the prayers so gathered, filed away, we now begin the closing moments of this dispensation as a response to the prayers through the ages. I, mm. I just, mm. It ties in mm. so much with uh, the Lord's uh, instruction for us to continue to pray. So mm. if we take yes. what, what we see in Revelation 5 and we just apply it to our individual lives or our corporate lives, you know, when we're praying for something, mm. if you can imagine that, well, there's a bowl. Yeah. That requires to be full for that prayer to be answered. Mm. Yeah, there's a supplication where we're asking God for something. There's no demonic mm. uh, resistance to it. We know when Daniel prayed uh, and to seek mm. the will of God for mm. Israel whilst in Babylon, how the prince of Persia withstood him for three mm. weeks. Now, when we're interceding for people's salvations or for, for situations to change in other people's lives, well, now it's not just their will and God's, but there's the demonic influence because the whole mm. world lies in the sway of the wicked one. Yes. So as we're praying and as we're interceding, so it's almost as though the Lord is storing up our prayers mm. until there's a sufficiency mm. where he can overwhelm that yeah. situation. Yes. Now I might be really painting a very, mm -hmm. you know, simplistic view of it, mm. but it's if we understand that in intercession, mm. there needs to be a gathering up of prayer. Yes, yes, yes. You know, that's a really nice allegory. Mm. And the reason why I say that, when I was a police officer, one of the things that's happened in latter days is that if the police, the local authority, get mm. a sufficient amount of calls, letters of complaint about any issue, then they have to respond. But it's only one or two that they're aware of it and they might get around to it eventually. But mm. if it's really serious, really important, other people will come forward and complain mm. as well. Mm. And I think it's the same sort of idea you're saying, isn't it? That if we are all of the same heart and the mm. same accord, then we're going to come to the Lord with the same message. Yeah. And Absolutely. that's really, it's that unity of spirit, isn't it? Right. Yeah. It's the same thing happened on the day of Pentecost, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a number of days when they were together, yeah, yeah. when the women were with them, and they were praying, they were of one accord, seeking the Lord, yeah. seeking the Lord, and there came the right moment where the Spirit of God was poured out upon the church. Yeah. There's a release, exactly. So, in a sense, that brings us back to what we were saying, and what's, what the thread of the way the Lord's been leading us, I think, even through the morning, in the sense that, you know, we've got to persist yeah, in prayer. got to go on, go on. Keep, who knows how how near we are till that yeah. bowl's full yeah, and the Lord right, will yeah. pour yeah. out his blessing yeah. Yeah. absolutely well yeah. gentlemen we've reached the time that we have to say goodbye we've run over time as always and I apologise I did want to keep this short because I know there's some um, nuptials and some food to be had but um, we always finish a prayer with the word Amen hmm. why is that? What, I know we generally accept it it's just we're agreeing we're agreeing with something but there's more to it when we say it the word Amen I mean, is there a Hebraic value in Amen, David? It's a statement of faith. Mm. So be it. Mm. it, it mm. It's saying, okay. it's, it's, it's saying, we believe. We it believe. Is, it has yeah. been done. It is yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah, remember, we need to pray in faith. Yeah. So, Amen, yeah. just, just basically, uh, it ends the prayer in a statement of, we believe. We believe it. Yeah, absolutely. God has heard. Yeah. It is done. Yes. Yes. I like that. So, it shouldn't, in a sense, just be added on as a matter of course. 
you know, we say amen to mean it before the Lord. Yes, yeah. a declaration. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, gentlemen, yeah. thank you very much. David, you're speaking again tonight. We thank you very much for the time you've given us this morning. I know you're busy and you've got a lot of places to go to in the UK over the next few few days, etc. Thank you very much for your time. And the Lord keep you and bless you and keep you safe. Thank you. And to you, Pastor, for giving us up your office and your facilities Pleasure. this morning. Thank you very much in Jesus' name. Pleasure. Bless you both. Amen. Amen.